Okay, part three, the three-on-one gauntlet match. They really couldn't have booked this any worse if they tried. Right, so Orton comes out first. He's injured from last night, of course, because Triple H is such a competitor. And um, they introduce his opponents, and the first opponent is Evan Bourne. What do I think of Evan Bourne being on Raw? I think he will be a lower mid-carder. That's what I think Evan Bourne will do on Raw. Um, his career had stalled on ECW, which baffles me, because how your career can stall on ECW, I have no idea. I thought he'd be world champion, but he just got nowhere near. Um, so yeah, I expect the same on Raw. It's just another example of Vince McMahon's booking, um, where, you know, if you, if you weigh 180 pounds, you're not going anywhere. No chance. In hell. Anyway, uh, so Evan Bourne comes out, and Evan Bourne looks impressive as usual. Doesn't get to do all that much. I actually kind of think if they put Evan Bourne as the third guy and had him pull the upset victory after Orton had, had been like really beaten up by the first two guys and had Ort and had uh, Bourne pick the upset victory, I think people would like that a lot. I think they could have booked uh, Evan Bourne as a sort of CM Punk-like underdog. Um, but no, they put him out first, so he's going to job to Orton. Uh, but he does look impressive, does does lots of kicks and stuff like that. Uh, he does that, he does the standing backflip, which I love. He also does the jumping leg thing where he pulls them down with his legs. I really like that. He's going up top for the Shooting Star Press. Orton crotches him on the ropes and then hits him with a running bulldog from the top rope. Or at least the King Cole said it was a running bulldog. It was actually... Clearly an RKO, all right? Clearly. I mean, I, how can they call things this wrong? The, the King, we all know the King only knows four moves, right? He only knows, like, a scoop slam, um, a pile driver, a suplex, and, uh, I don't know, something else. A bulldog, right? And he just says, he, any other move he sees, he just calls it a modified version of either a scoop slam, a suplex, a power driver, or a bulldog. That's all he does. So this was a running bulldog, right? That's all he knows. And that's sad. Um, but, yes, this was an RKO that Randy Orton won with, just for the record. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not too happy to see Evan Bourne lose, but I suppose it makes sense since he came out first. Then Jack Swagger comes out, and how do I feel about Jack Swagger being on Raw? Well, I feel it's not very good news for Jack Swagger. Um, he shakes hands with Orton at the end of this match, which is not appropriate at all, because we all know that Jack Swagger is going to be nowhere near Randy Orton and Raw. He's going to, he should be shaking hands with MVP, The Miz, and Kofi Kingston, because those are the guys he's going to be fighting with and against for the next six months. He's going nowhere on Raw. He's going to be that sort of upper mid-card echelon of wrestlers that never get to the top because Triple H and Cena and Batista, well actually Orton does job, but Triple H, Cena and Batista will never lose to them basically. Um, so yeah, I don't think this is good for Jack Swagger. I think on ECW he was the man. I think on Smackdown they would have made him into the man. Raw, no chance. Uh, but Swagger comes out and he delivers one of his lovely throws to Randy Orton and then he stands on the ring apron and gets himself counted out. And then he tries to cut a promo but fails, as usual. Uh, and basically all he was saying was that he really respects Randy Orton and he shakes his hand. That's that. So that's Orton done two now. And really, it couldn't be more boring up to this point. Even with Evan Bourne, this still couldn't have been more boring. The, the swagger match was just a joke. Then Mark Henry comes out and takes forever to do anything. And it's just, it's so slow. And it's just dead air and it's rubbish. Uh, but yeah, Mark Henry comes out. I foolishly expected the last person to be The Undertaker. I thought The Undertaker might have been traded because they're like the big build up. This last guy who comes out is obviously going to be Orton. Be Torton. Who would they let be Orton? The Undertaker. That's who they'd let. But no, it's Mark Henry. What? I mean, as soon as Mark Henry came out, I was like, oh, Orton's going to win then. So yeah, Mark Henry is teasing both that he's a heel, then he's teasing that he's a face, basically. So he, he says that he wants to leave a lasting impression of Orton, on Orton, then he beats him up, and then, then he goes to the outside and teases he might be a heel to get himself counted out. Then he stops the referee's count and teases he's a face, he comes back in. 
Orton begs on his knees for Mark Henry not to beat him. But this request is not, is doesn't meet with any joy. And Orton goes for an RKO and Mark Henry World Strong slams him for the clean pinfall victory on the WWE Champion. What? Firstly, Mark Henry's face turn made no sense, right? That's just a given. That's in brackets, right? But more than that, Mark Henry is a jobber, okay? He is a jobber. He only recently got elevated above jobber status on ECW to put him in that championship scramble match as the fifth man and the odd one out, basically, right? He He's a jobber. That's all he is. And he just pinned Randy Orton. I mean, this, this is beyond belief. This is just insane. And then he, he cheers with the crowd. And you're like, is Mark Henry really going to get pushed back to the main event? Even though he has failed so many times in every push he's had to get remotely over or be remotely impressive in any way. He is shit. He is totally shit. Anyway, so that was that match, and it was absolutely terrible. Um, Batista comes out, and he applauds what he's just seen. And I hope Batista can be happy with the crap fest he just saw. I have no idea, but... Anyway, let's just talk a little bit about this 15 Raw Superstar move. 15, you know, the thing. Anyway, right, so Raw got Gail Kim, Alicia Fox, who's terrible and totally doesn't matter... Jack Swagger and Evan Bourne, who I've already expressed my feelings on, as I feel I've done with Mark Henry. Total jobber, shouldn't be in the main event picture. Okay, Gail Kim. Uh, I don't think it's good that she's been moved to Raw. I think Raw Divas matches are always terrible. Uh, they don't really focus on their Divas at all. I think SmackDown is starting to focus on Divas wrestling a bit. They're trying to put them in storylines, trying to think up storylines for them. She was much better, on Smack much better off than SmackDown. What can you do? SmackDown roster got Matt Hardy, Finley, and the Hart Dynasty, David Hart Smith, Tyson Kidd, and Natalia. What do you think about this? Right, the Hart Dynasty, I think it's fine. I think they probably should have stayed on ECW for a bit longer, but I think it's fine. Uh, I really hope that Tyson Kidd gets pushed properly, even though he weighs less than 200 pounds. Sorry, Vince. Uh, but I hope he gets pushed properly, and they don't just have David Hart Smith, um... Because he's rubbish. He's terrible. He weighs over 200 pounds, but he's fucking awful, right? I hope they don't push him. Uh, and Natalia, I hope she gets some wrestling time as well. Matt Hardy and Finley. Oh, right. Matt Hardy should be released, okay? Even even if you're one of those people who likes Matt Hardy, um, they put him in a huge storyline on the bill up to WrestleMania, and he managed to make himself irrelevant within months, all right? He is awful. He can't sell any offense. He can't deliver any offense, can't cut a promo, terrible wrestler. Uh, Finley is just an old man. ECW roster, ECW got destroyed in this move. They don't have any wrestlers left except Christian, and Christian is the only one who should have been traded, really. Jack Swagger, Evan Bourne, all those guys, they could have done with another year on ECW. Christian needs to get out of there, and they left him on. Horrible decision. Anyway, ECW got Shelton Benjamin, who we expect to see as a title contender, and hopefully will be. They got Goldust, who's a jobber, but they're going to have to make him something more than a jobber because they have no one else. And they got William Regal, who has been a jobber recently as well, and I, I don't want to see him be ECW champion because that cheapens that title even more. Not like Shavo Guerrero wearing it didn't cheer, cheapen it enough. And we have Brie and Nikki Bella. Total joke. Do they even have any other women to wrestle? No, they're just going to be there. That's the end. Anyway, please feel free to rate this video, to comment on this video. Um, tell me your views, please. Tell me your views on this trade stuff. Uh, tell me your views on Raw in general. Uh, there'll probably be some people defending it. Okay, subscribe if you wish. Bye.